Hello folks, I hope you're all well. The card we're going to be looking at today is the Hierophant. I'm going to look at it from various angles. We'll see what its implications are. Also, how you might use it in a spread. As you can see here, the first example I'm using is from the Rider Waite Smith pack, a classic picture. It's a Pope and two monks. Certainly an authority figure in the spiritual world who has knowledge, that's symbolised by the two pillars, who's also a guardian of knowledge. He's in front of the pillars and you can't see behind them. There are two monks at the front who are kneeling, apparently, waiting for that knowledge to be imparted or being blessed and having things shared with them. Now, the red in dominates in this particular card as well and so does the central figure so this is somebody who is imposing now that can be a positive or a negative thing as all of us know so it may be somebody who has spiritual knowledge to impart which you need to hear but it can also be somebody who is trying to impose a view or an attitude upon you of course, it will depend on the spread if you're seeing this in a spread you're reading then you've got to interpret whether that is positive, negative, neutral, pointing in a particular direction, whatever it's indicating. But here you can see that it's a very authoritarian sort of card. The second example I'm showing here is from the Everyday Witch deck. And now you can see how looking at a different deck, the same card will give a different impression. We still have an authority figure here. But this authority figure is on a much more equal footing with the two people who are in the card. In fact, if you look at the configuration, there's a triangle here, an equ almost equilateral triangle. You can see it. There's an equality in this one, which there wasn't in the Rider Waite Smith deck. Here they're seated on the ground. It's a yoga or a meditation class. Somebody is sharing her information with those people. They have come along to partake as well as to be given information so they've come to understand through their own experience in this case rather than just being preached to so this can be again a, a softer impression um, than the earlier card there may still be somebody who imposes we can only see her face but in a much more subtle way it could still be a warning remember even for that but in general the card has really good vibes there's a peace here a tranquility a sharing and people who have come along to learn so in this sense it's a very positive card it's a good vibe that goes with this one don't forget though there can always be warnings look at the cards around to see what else is going on number three today is from the queer tarot this really is a different vibe altogether. Look at it. It is vibrant. The colours there, the energy, it's popping out at you. And yet the authority figure is so laid back. Look at him. He's relaxed on that throne. He has the knowledge, but even the pillars aren't rigid. Look at them and there's a great sky behind him. Something wonderful, something slightly trippy going on here. He's blessing. He's got people standing in front of him, but this time they look like they're standing. They look like they are waiting. They also do look like they could walk away at any point in time. So they're listening to see what he has to share. He may have that spiritual enlightenment again, but it may not be for them. If it is for them, they will stay. If it's not for them, they'll walk away. They're not like the monks in the first scene. They're not kneeling, passively receiving the information. They're not like the participants in the second card where everybody's in it together and there is a vibe going on between them all continuously. Here, there's a vibe. It's quite dominating. And again, it can be positive or negative, but this time there's much more of the you can choose. You have the ability here. So if this turns up in a spread look at it you know the the your querent the person who is asking the question who's come for the reading is a much more active participant here they're not being dominated by anybody nor are they just sharing with anybody and yet again there's still a joyousness about it there's a fun even if they reject what he has to say they'll have had a good time 
And if they do accept what he's got to say, then they can move on. You've got a feeling they will be allowed. You're like, come on, I'll move my chair, come in, have a look, see what exactly the world is like within the knowledge that I'm giving you. Take a look at all the cards together. It's always worth comparing packs. Yes, the Rider Waite Smith is the most popular pack as far as I know for tarot reading in the Western world. And it's a very Western, slightly old fashioned, quite rigid pack, but it's still popular because if you've got a flexible personality, you can read all sorts in it. But for you, there may be other packs that you want to look at. And you've seen here how you can get a completely different type of vibe from a different pack. It will give you a reading that's good for you and good for your client, but it will be different, you know, and it will match to you because you have picked that pack because of its appeal to you. I will say myself, I use for the most part the Rider Waite Smith for most readings, but for certain things, certain aspects or certain people, I will change the pack. And the two that you've seen are two of the main ones that I use. Be open minded. That's sort of the point about doing tarot altogether. Keep your mind open. Look for the images. See what comes in.